Chapter Fourteen of Stories from God's Holy Book by Josephine Looney. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. The Childhood of Jesus. It was a cold, rainy afternoon in January. Patricia and Bobby were content to sit in front of the fire with Joe. For some time now, they had been looking at the holy cards they had been given in Sunday school. Suddenly, Bobby asked, "Why was the Christ Child named Jesus?" The word Jesus means Savior, Joe answered. You remember that an angel appeared to the Blessed Virgin to tell her that God had chosen her to be the mother of his son. Soon after that, God sent another angel to earth. This one came to Joseph. He explained that Mary would have a baby who would be called the Son of God. Joseph would be his foster father. You shall call his name Jesus, said the angel, for he shall save his people from their sins. Patricia broke in as usual with the question, "What does foster father mean?" A foster father takes someone else's child and brings it up as if it were his own. Joe replied, "God chose Saint Joseph to be the foster father of Jesus because Joseph was so kind and so holy." Then he must have been good to Jesus. Patricia made this a statement rather than a question. "Yes," answered Joe. Joseph had only one wish in his heart. To take care of Jesus and Mary, do you know what we call these three? The Holy Family," said both children at once. "Good. God wants us to make our own families as much like the Holy Family as we can." When they came back from Egypt, they settled in the little town of Nazareth. Joseph opened a carpenter shop so he could earn the money to take care of Jesus and Mary. Mary kept house and made a happy home for them all. When the Christ child was old enough, he helped. He swept the shop. He ran errands for Joseph. When his mother needed water, he brought it from the well. When she was busy, he set the table for her. Was Jesus always a good boy? Bobby inquired. Always replied Joe. Jesus was God. You remember everything he did was good. Besides this, he wanted to show other children that God likes to have them obey their parents. Did he play with other children just as we do? Patricia asked. Yes," answered Joe. He liked to play with other children. He was always willing to share his toys with them. He would not fight or say mean things. Best of all, he liked to be with his cousin. The cousin's name was John. The two boys had good times together. They would play in the fields with their pet lambs, or they would gather wild flowers to give to their mothers. I think it's nice," observed Patricia, "that Jesus didn't act as though he was greater than everybody else on earth." Joe nodded her head. That is the very reason he came to Earth as a little child, she said. He made all the people in the world. He loved them very, very much. He wanted them to love him with all their hearts. He did not come as a great king. He did not come as a great warrior. That might make people afraid to come to him. But no one is afraid of a tiny baby. Everyone loves it and is gentle with it. So Jesus, our God, came to us as a little helpless babe of Bethlehem. He wanted us all to take him right into our hearts. I'm glad," approved Bobby. "I like him best that way." "Me too," said Patricia. She gave a loving glance at the crib. "But Jesus came to teach us too," Joe continued. "He came to tell us how to get to heaven. He could never forget that, even when he was a boy. Let me tell you what happened. Every year, all the Jews from the whole world gathered together in God's temple at Jerusalem." There they celebrated a great feast called the Passover. This feast was in memory of the time God brought the Jews out of Egypt long, long before. When Jesus was twelve years old, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem for the Passover. After the feast ended, all the people prepared to go home. The men went out through one gate in the city wall. The women went out through another. The children were allowed to go with either their fathers or mothers. Jesus went with his mother. Patricia decided, didn't he? I think he went with Joseph," said Bobby. "You're both wrong," said Joe. Mary thought he was with Joseph. Joseph thought he was with Mary. But when the groups of men and women met on the road many hours later, the child Jesus was not there. He was not with either Mary or Joseph. They were frightened. Night had fallen, but they started back to Jerusalem at once to look for him. For three days they searched the city. Their hearts were filled with grief and worry. 
At last, when they had looked everywhere else, they thought of looking in the temple, and there they found him. He was sitting among the teachers and wise men. Jesus had stayed in the temple all the time. The teachers and wise men were talking about God's law. At first Jesus listened to them, but soon he was answering questions. He was explaining things about God to them that they had never known. They could not understand how a young boy could be so wise. But didn't Jesus know his mother and St. Joseph would be worried? Bobby asked. Yes, but even while Mary and Joseph were worried, they knew he must have some good reason for staying in Jerusalem, Joe explained. So now Mary asked him what his reason was. Son, she said, why have you done this? We thought we had lost you. And Jesus answered, Mother, why have you looked for me? Didn't you know that I must do my father's work? He meant that he must teach the things that God his father sent him here to teach. After that, Jesus went back home to Nazareth with them. He obeyed them gladly. He did everything he could to help them. Every day they loved him more, and every day God the Father was more pleased with him. End of chapter 14